we welcome back to our subject. So for today, we will be discussing how to analyze now a tension member based from the topics that we have discussed so far. Okay. So as you recall, we have here the requirement for LRFD. We said before that for us to have or to satisfy the design philosophy of LRFD, the required strength or the loading that the structure will be subjected to should be less than the design strength or the capacity of our section. Or it means that uh, the, this, the, the, the capacity of our section should be greater than the loadings that will be applied to our structure. So that is what we need to understand. And when using LRFD design philosophy, we are multiplying our load effects with a, a load factor typically greater than one to account for any uncertainties of our loading. And then we are trying to multiply our nominal capacity with a resistance factor, typically less than one, for us uh, to, uh, again, consider the possible human error or construction defects that may happen on site that will affect the performance of our structure. We also discuss the load combination that will be used uh, for LRFD. So if dead load and live load will be the only loadings that will be present in the given problem, uh, load combo one and load combo two will be the uh, sufficient load combination that we can use and then select just, uh, and just select the most or yung, uh, load combo that will give us the, mo the most uh, maximum value of load effect based from our dead load and live load. Then after that, we also discuss two of the limit state that we experience for tension members. Number one is tension yielding in the gross section, and then we have tension rupture in the next section. For gross section yielding, we need to satisfy that the capacity of our section, PPN, should be equal to 0.9 FYAG or greater than with our ultimate loading, which is derived from our load combination. For net section rupture, we need to satisfy that the, our VPN should be equal to 0.75 FU times AE. And so far, we already discussed the concept of shear lag factor, so we can calculate already the value of the effective net area, which is equal to the value of the product of uh, our shear lag factor times our net area. And this um, full uh, expression should be greater than also with our load combination. So again, for um, LRFD, we are using 0.9. And then for ASD, we are dividing this equation by two, uh, 1.67. For ASD, uh, for LRFD of net section rupture, we are multiplying it by 0.75, but for ASD, we are dividing it or dividing FUE by 2.0. And then we also discuss some of the properties of the most common structural steel that we are using on our examples. So for A36, we have the following value of FY and FU. Then for A57 to grade 50 and A992, we have the same value of 50 KSI and 65 KSI. So for A36, we have 36 KSI and 58 KSI. So in metric scale, 36 KSI, we can take 36 KSI as uh, the same as 248 megapascal. Then for 58 KSI, we can take that as 400 megapascal. For 50 KSI, we can assume that that value is equal to 245 megapascal. Then for 65 KSI, uh, we can take that value equals to 450 mega Pascal. Okay? So this value is the same with A992. And then we also discuss the concept of net area for bolted connection and welded connection. For bolted connection, uh, if our uh, net area is for a grid type connection, we will be utilizing the formula with two terms. And then when we are experiencing a parallel, a, a, a staggered type connection, we are introducing a additional factor 
uh, which is called the staggered factor, to account for the inclination of the area. Okay? So if the given stagger or the spacing and gauge of the staggered bolts are the same for all cases, we can multiply it by the number of diagonals that we can see on our critical path. But if not, we need to get separately each uh, stagger for our bolt to satisfy the required area. Then for welded connection, since we are not um, punching any holes on our element, it is assumed that the net area is equal to the gross area. Then we also discuss the shear lag factor U, and according to the code or NSCP table 504.3.1, we will be using the shear lag factor table to identify whichever is maximum. So we have eight cases depending on the type of shape that we are using, but typically case one and case two is being used for tension members. And then whenever uh, other cases are satisfied, we use them and then compare the values. Now, whichever value is governing, meaning maximum, we use that at our U factor. So let's have an example problem. So a 12 meter long W8 by 24 A992 steel is to be used as a tension member. A 20 mm diameter bolts are employed. If the member is subjected to a service dead load of 350 kilonewton and a service live load of 400 kilonewton, can the member resist this loading? Another question is, does the member meet recommended slenderness limitation? So, okay. So I think there are some missing detail about this connection. I think uh, it has a spacing of, uh, edge spacing of 50 mm, 75 and then 75. And then, we uh let's identify all the given. We have a length of twelve meters long. Okay, and then we are using W eight by twenty four. Then a nine nine two steel. For a nine nine two steel again, we need to get the value of F Y and F U. And as mentioned earlier, for F Y, uh, we for fifty ksi that is equivalent to three hundred forty five megapascal. And for FU of 65, we, that is 450 megapascal. Okay. And then we have a diameter of bolt equals to 20 mm. Since 20 mm is less than 22, so D effective would be DB plus 4 mm. So 4 mm is composed of 2 mm for the allowance for the diameter of the hole and another 2 mm for the allowance of erection or punching. So we have here a total of effective diameter of 24 mm. Okay. And then we also have our loading. So we have a dead load is equal to 350 kilonewton and a live load of 400 kilonewton. Okay. So to start off this problem, the first and foremost that we need to satisfy is the requirement of the of LRF. So since uh, this problem does not uh, specify which this design philosophy to use, it is the safest assumption would be an LRFD approach. And to satisfy LRFD approach, we need to satisfy that the capacity of our section should be greater than or equal to our ultimate load. Okay, so first is to identify what is the ultimate loading that we will be using. So first step is calculate P. And PU will count from our load combination. So we have two load combination that we can use. First one is 1.4D. Second one is 1.2D plus 1.6N. So calculating these values, 1.4 times 350 kilonewton, that is equal to 1.4 times 350, that is 490 kilonewton. Then for the next one, you have 1.2, 350 kilonewton, plus 1.6 times 400 kilonewton. So the value will be 350 plus 1.6 times 400, that is 10, 000, uh, 1,060 kilonewton. So whichever uh, value gives the most 
or the maximum value. So our PU will be this one. This is the governing one. So P is equal to 10, 1060 kilo newton. So this is the loading that we need to resist. We need to check whether our given section could satisfy the given load. Okay. So what properties now are needed for our W8 by 24? So to get the capacity of our section, we need to consider uh, the two limit state that we have already discussed. That's the gross section yielding or GSY or net section yielding. So let's have another sheet. For gross section yielding, okay, so for gross section yielding, so gross section yielding, or GSY, we need to satisfy PN is equal to FY times AG. We need the area gross of our section. So for LRFT, that is VPN is equal to V, or yielding is 0.9 FY AG. So to calculate for that value, we need the value of AG. So let us first get the value that we need for W8 by 24. These are AG. Then let's try the value for the depth, the width of the flange, the thickness of the flange. We also need the radius of gyration along X and along Y. Okay, to verify later. So for W8 by 24, let us look at that our W shape. W8 by 24. Oh, 8 by 24. Okay, so 8 by 24 is this one. Okay, that is one. So let us write uh, AG for this one is 7.08. So this is our own, all in English, in just spirit. We have the depth of the flange, uh, the depth of the section, 7.93 inch. The width of the flange, we have 6.5 inch. The thickness of the flange, that is 0 0.4 inch. We have the radius of gyration of X, that is 3.42 inches. And then RY, we have 1.61 inches. Okay, so let's uh, extract these values. Then copy it into our sheet. Okay. Okay, so here are our values. So let us now calculate our um, PPN for gross section yielding. So we have 0.9. And FY of how much we have from the previous slide that is 345, that is A992, right? So 345, that is Newton per mm squared times the area gross is 7.08 inches squared. So we need to convert inches squared to mm squared. So we have 25 mm over 1 inch squared. Uh, then we cancel out uh, the mm squared. And then to derive or to convert newton to kilonewton, we have 1,000 newton per kilonewton. So we cancel out newton. The final um, unit for VPA based from gross section will be, will be, point, uh, will be in kilonewton. 0.08 squared divide 1,000. Our value is 1,373. 0.9625 kilonewton. So this is our PPN for yielding. Next is for uh, net section rupture. Net section rupture, or what we call NSR. Okay. So our PN will be equal to FU AE or FU times U times AN. So for LRFT, we have PPN, 
that is 0.75 Fu U times An. So let us uh, calculate this one by one. Let us first look for the value of An. An, so we have our section here. So this is our loading. So the net, the possible failure of our structure according to um, that section rupture will be this portion. Okay, so it will uh, it will pass through four bolts in total. Okay, due to this critical portion, critical section for our net area. Net area is AG. AG minus number of bolts effective diameter times T. So AN is equal to 7 point. So we have 0 0.8 times 25 squared minus 4 volts times 24 mm times the thickness. So since our loading is attached or at, uh, our connection is attached on the flanges, we have the thickness of the flanges. So thickness of flange is 0.4 times 25. And 0 0.8, 25 squared minus 4 times 24 times 0.4 times 25. That is 4 point, uh, let's double check, 0 0.4 times 25 should be minus. So that is 3,460. So 3,465 mm squared. That is our net area for, okay. So shear lag factor, U. So cases of, uh, applicable are, of course, case number two. For case one, all parts should be connected. So since case one is not satisfied, automatic case two will be used. Okay. And then beside from, from case two, case three and four is for welding, case five and six for HSS. So A seven is for I shape or W shape section. So seven is good, but eight is not because eight is exclusive for angles. So we calculate uh, the values for the second case. U two is equal to one minus connected part over Lcon, okay, Lcon. So we have a W8 by 24, and according to our discussion of um, X or connection eccentricity, we need to get the half of the W section, which is 4 by 12, and then we will look at the distance of the centroid. So this is its centroid and the connected portion so this is the connected portion so that is bar y so that is our x code so uh, let's look at a w t shape allow me to um to check it on my desktop for w t shape The value of bar y is 0 0.695 inch. So look at table 1-8 na lang. Okay? So 0 0.695. So x cone will be 0 0.695. So this is 1 minus 0 0.695 times 25. Uh, over our connection length will be based from the distance of our uh, connection. So this is from the first connection until the last connection. So the distance is two, se two values of 75, so that is 150 in total. So substituting that value here, we have a value for U2 of one minus 0 0.695 times 25 over 150, that is 0 0.884. And then for K7, okay, let's look at our uh, D3-1. For K7, uh, we need to satisfy 
a flange connected with three or more fasteners. This is our case. We need to satisfy whether BF is greater than two-thirds of T or BF is less than two-thirds of T. Okay? So, let's uh, have a, snap, a snippet of this. Okay. Then, going back to our slide, okay, to calculate for uh, case number seven. So, for case number seven, this is our reference. Okay. So, we need to get the value of BF and so this is the value of BF and D. Let's copy this one. Okay, so let's calculate. So we need just need to get the two thirds of D, which is two times seven point ninety three divided three, that is five point twenty nine. And as you can see, BF is greater than two-thirds of T. So, it means U7 is equal to 0.9. And according to the code, the governing U that we will be using is whichever is uh, greater. So, that is point for our system. Alright? So, after calculating that, we cannot substitute the values. So, 0 0.75 times we have 450 Newton per mm squared times u factor of 0.9 an is 3465 mm squared and to convert this to kilonewton divided by 1 newton per kilonewton the newton is cancelled mm squared is cancelled the remaining value or unit is kilonewton so we have 0 0.75 times 450 times 0 0.9 times 3465 divide 1000 we have a capacity of 1052.494 kilonewton. Okay, so this is based from the capacity of that section yielding. So if we try to compare the value of the capacity based on GSY and NSR, the governing capacity now is the lesser value, of course. Okay, so, so the larger value is not selected because when we are trying to explain to our client what is the capacity of our section if this is the value that we uh, give them there will come a time that when the actual stresses on the structure reaches this point there will be some uh, failure that already occurring because this is based from the net section rupture that we anticipated so the for us to be conservative we need to select the value of the smaller capacity so that all limit state will be considered and the uh, most critical will be uh, the one that has the least value of nominal capacity. So our governing VPN, governing uh, loading is 1052.494 kilonewton. Okay. But we need to check whether this VPN is uh, satisfying the condition for LRFT. As we said earlier, VPN should be greater than with our applied loading. So VPN is 52.494 kilonewton. So our PU, based from our previous slide, is 1060 kilonewton. That is 1060 kilonewton. So it means that it is less than, okay? Okay, so since it does not satisfy the required condition, what is our conclusion? Therefore, the W8 by 24 section fails. Okay, or you can simply say uh, it's not good. The section is not good or NG. So as engineers, we try to suggest another alternative section, then we will try to recheck whether that section can now satisfy our loading. Okay, so that answers our first question. So can the member resist this loading? No, because the capacity of the given section is less than the ultimate load that the structure could carry in the future. Okay, so it's not good. 
And then if this is a separate uh, question, the second one is the, the standardized limitation. We use the formula L over R, in we convert L into its uh, MM equivalent, and then using the value of the minimum radius of gyration. Why minimum? To get the value of uh, the most critical LR. So if the device are smaller, we will have a value of greater, uh, a greater value, which is being compared with the suggested limitation of 300. Then R mean is 1.61 inch times 25 mm per inch. So we have a unitless quantity. 12,000 all over 1.61 times 25, that is 298.137. That is less than 300. Okay, so it means, therefore, um, section, uh, a standard is requirement. Uh, standard is requirement. is satisfied okay but it doesn't mean that the section can be used okay it just suggests that the height of the given beam is sufficient for deflection okay or to counteract the limitation for slenderness but overall the section is not good or we cannot use a section because it does not meet the criteria that we need for B, okay? So this will be our answer. So uh, I'll try to box this one. And then of course, our standard is showing that we satisfied the suggested value for tension member of 300, okay? So that's, that is how you calculate the capacity of the section based from the two limit state that we have already um, identified. Okay, so that ends this video. Thank you for watching.